Hi, my name is Neil Creswell. I'm with the Kickstarter Watches and Horology Microbrands group on Facebook, uh, where we like to review various microbrand watches, such as the Valleymore Caliburnus you see in front of you. And of course, uh, quick disclosures, you can see here I also um, run the microbrand store, uh, which is why I'm able to put so many watches out for this review. So this is going to be a mega review of everything Valleymore Caliburnus. It's going to be all three dials from the Kickstarter campaign with the um, date and no date options. It's going to be every single one of the straps available from the Kickstarter, the bracelet, which is also very unique to this watch. And you can see a couple of extra colors here that are not in the Kickstarter. These are actually unique to the store. So the purpose of this review, it's not a sales pitch. It's literally, you want to you know, if you're looking in the store or you're looking uh, on, indeed, on Valleymore's site, you're welcome to a comparison shop there. Or you like the Kickstarter campaign and you missed it and you wanted to see what the colors are. Or maybe you're looking to get an extra strap. I personally find it easier with a video. If I see a photo, I don't know, maybe it's in a kind of a soft uh, yellow light and it looks a little bit nicer than in kind of outdoor daylight or things look a bit different in different circumstances. And with a video, you can pick something up, move it around a little bit, and it just kind of helps create a better picture of, of what it looks like. Uh, I don't edit my videos apart from uh, removing any uh, bloopers, but um, apart from that, everything is just a straight run. Uh, dump it out and share it with people. So I'm trying to give a candid review, um, but at the same time I want to give a disclosure that I'm also uh, selling this in the store, of course. And uh, I think this is kind of fun, actually. First time I've decided to put everything out from a brand, I'll probably do that with the um, Wardhoffs that are coming in soon. Uh, I think they're due in next week, uh, which uh, some Torbium watches, and I can put all the colors out so people can see both colors in the same video. Um, so it's kind of giving me some advantages, I guess, running a store to actually review all at once. But at the same time, I'm trying to make this useful for people who are just trying to understand what the choices are, how they work, and pros and cons. So let's get stuck in. So the, this, let's cover these three first. They're from the uh, Kickstarter campaign. Um, and the first one is a black marble, just to cover the what's underneath on the dial. These are all natural stones. Every single watch is going to look slightly different. I apologize for the overhead light. It is making a bit of glare, but I wanted to make sure I could light this all up for you as opposed to just in one spot. And the next one um, is a blue one, which is a lapis lazuli. Uh, and they tend to uh, kind of look like spotty blue with spotty other colors such as gray. Um, but it's a very interesting uh, texture and pattern to the watch. And the third one, which is uh, one of my personal favorites, is... Uh, um, a red jasper. So those are the three colors um, from the Kickstarter campaign. And just what makes these watches so different to other watches, obviously the gemstone number one. I mean, I don't really know other watches that have lapis lazuli or red jasper for the dial. So that makes it very interesting. But there's a ton of other features too that make this interesting. You probably notice this kind of aged patina effect on both the case and actually on the custom bracelet as well. They do so that's a very nice effect. It is three, a 316 L stainless steel, uh, and that's a PVD application. So you can kind of see a, uh, it's very carefully done. The, uh, I believe uh, Valimore have applied for a patent for this, so it's very unique to Valimore. The theme of this watch is kind of a uh, kind of knights and dragons, uh, King Arthur, knights of the round table kind of a thing. So you have a lot of dragon scale on these watches, as you can see around the bezel, which is a very nice feature. That is also covered in a couple of other places as well. It's on the crown. That's also a stone on the crown, natural stone or crystal. Uh, and then you can see on the on the buckle, it's very well decorated. Um, in fact, if you were to buy one of the watches at the back here, they all come with this buckle, so you'd have more than one buckle. And it's also aged with the patina. Uh, the, the scale is actually carried on on the back, which I find unusual to have it on the um, kind of screw down case back here. You've actually got the dragon scale around the edge and it's kind of mirrored on a custom rotor, which is kind of nice. It's another color. It is a nicely decorated movement. You can see it ticking away there. Um, we'll hit my first negative, but I understand why we're using this movement in this watch. It's a Miyota 8, which is not my personal favorite. Um, it's a great reliable movement, so nothing wrong with it. Um, but, you know, one of the things I'm not too keen on is it doesn't hack. Um, so when you 
pull it out to stop, uh, so to adjust the hours and minutes, the second hand doesn't necessarily stop. So not really the end of the world. Uh, and occasionally you can get a noisy rotor, which um, this one doesn't have it. One of them down here does, but the rest are fine. It's just a random luck of the draw. So it is a super reliable movement, so there's nothing wrong with it. And I know why they used it, because they wanted this decoration on the back. Um, and they're trying to keep this a cost-effective watch, and it's got a lot of custom features in it. The working of the stone is one that's very unique. Obviously, it's a custom case. This PVD application, uh, you'd be surprised how many hours it takes to do this. I've been w uh, working with the creator quite a bit. Uh, and on these bracelets, it took them an extra two months to get these out, and the factory was so pissed off at him for insisting on a particular level of quality on this that he basically has to now find a new factory if he needs to produce any more of these bracelets. So he's um, doing an excellent job in terms of keeping the standards up, but uh, at the same time, um, it probably adding a little bit of cost to the watch. But I don't really mind that because it just the whole thing about this watch is it's very unique. The 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 dial is the thing that stands out to me the most, of course. But everything else is just like. Uh, real attention to detail. Even the uh, the strap here, uh, this is obviously, it's uh, I think it's a uh, calf skim, it's certainly a cow leather strap. Uh, it gives you the kind of uh, kind of ridge back that you'd get with, you know, a crocodile uh, or something like that, or a lizard, or I can never remember what the animal is that has the ridge back here. Um, but it, but it's, it, this is actually artificially done, uh, just like you get a, a stamped or embossed croc strap that's actually a uh, crocodile strap that's actually um calfskin but it's very nicely done so uh it's another nice feature of the watch that you get this which you'd normally finally find in a custom strap um does have quick release pins so i can literally stick my finger in there take that out and just put it in just as quickly um while we're talking about features um so we talked about the strap the lug width is 22 millimeters so you can put your own straps in there too of course but um, the bracelet also, I was surprised when I got this bracelet uh, for the first time. As you can see, it's got a it's a hidden uh, butterfly clasp. But the thing that really surprised me about this, um, and it's a solid link bracelet, it's got, it's got double pins here that are also push pins. So you actually install the bracelet, no tools required. You literally just squeeze with two fingers, pop it out, squeeze with two fingers, push it in, let go. And it's it's usually immediately clicks into place. So I've it's taken me a minute literally to switch this this out for this. Very easy to do. Of course, you need to resize a bracelet uh, uh, as opposed to the strap. And then um, it doesn't have screwed links, um, but it does have push pins that are very easy to use. So you literally get a tool like this, push it in here. In fact, this one we have in the store. You push in here where the arrow is, and the pin pops out. And you can take out the link. Uh, to resize the bracelet. So that's pretty easy to do. Uh, if you're clumsy like I am, you can also use something like this, which is just two or three dollars. And uh, if you want to know where to get one of these, just send me some, uh, leave me a comment and I'll happily help with that. So uh, it's, um, you know, so there's a nice feature of the watch that you have this very unique custom bracelet, which was an option. I think it cost extra. Um, I don't even know if you can find these anywhere right now. I will get one if you're going to get the watch because it goes so well with the case. This kind of aged patina effect. Um, it's actually lighter. I've got dragon scale along on this as well. So it's a really nice feature. So there's a lot that I really like about the watch. Um, it's also sapphire glass, which I can show you here. Let's just get this test to make sure it's... Uh, okay, so if it lights up a few bars, it's sapphire crystal. So um, you can see it's lighting up. I kind of know this already because I test every single watch when it comes in, but you know, just for the sake of this, I'll call it a review. It's kind of a review overview kind of combination. So um, definitely a very nice watch from my perspective. So I was really happy when we were stocking these in the store. Uh, this one is my personal watch. I took this out the moment it arrived. It was the first one I got out the, when we got the package. We got a crater, bo uh, crater watches and I just completely fell for it. So this is my watch and um, Really happy I got this. I probably want one of each color, but well, I don't know. I have to convince my wife from that. I'm also probably going to keep this one too. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about these colors in a minute. These are not available on Valleymore's site, and they're not available on Kickstarter. 
Um, they're a color that I'm uh, working with them on uh, that's going to be unique for the microbrand store. And I can probably pretty comfortably say at this point, we will be stocking this one. Uh, we'll take a look at that in a minute. And we'll probably be stocking this one too. We'll see. So let's uh, get back to the colors. I, we, I think we talked about this one being a black marble, which was from the Kickstarter campaign. Black goes very well with black, of course. Understated. It's kind of elegant. While we're looking at the watch, other features I may or may not have mentioned uh, that I also liked. Um, the hands are very unique as well, not just that it's kind of a sword-shaped hand, but if you can see one side of the hand is brushed um, and the other side is polished. And these are you know diamond cut hands, so it's really well done. There's even a nice decoration on the counterweight for the second hand there. So um you know, it's a very simple dial which it needs to be so you can focus on the stone material. But at the same time with the applied indices and everything, it's a very nice dial. Um, when you start looking at the extra features, there's a, there's a ton of extra in this watch, which is, I guess, what I'm trying to point out. Uh, there's also got a passable loom on it. Um, not the strongest of looms, but it's not the dive watch. Um, I'm just doing this so you can see where it would be loomed. Um, but overall, it's a very decent, reliable watch. I've not had any issue with any of the ones we've had in stock. Uh, the guy who runs uh, Valimore, Raymond, has spent a very long time doing luxury watch repairs. He actually assembles, I think he assembles these watches himself. He gets the parts made out. Uh, typically, a micro brand will send out to a factory to have things made. Uh, and he's not really any different to, uh, to any others. He's in a good position, though, to uh, insist upon good quality uh, because he's in the industry himself, he's technical, he's not just a designer. So I kind of like that about the Valimore brand. So far everything from them has been ultra reliable. Uh, this next one here is a lapis lazuli, also from the Kickstarter campaign with the blue and it's usually kind of blue circular dots and grey. Obviously each dial is going to look a little different depending which one you get. Depends on its natural rock, it will be cut differently, the veining will be a little different, but it gives you an idea. This is the last one we have in stock. I know he's currently sold out, but I can get some more in if people are interested, so let me know. There's probably a couple of weeks lead time to that. The strap here is also the um, Ridgeback strap, but the blue color one. So you can see how that goes well with the um, with the blue lapis lazuli. And then uh, we talked about Jasper already, I think. This is a red Jasper one, which is my personal favorite. And then uh, there's two versions for all three of these. There's a with date. You can see a small circular cutout here. And there's a without date uh, where there's no cutout. I personally like the no without date. It's more balanced. Um, it's... Uh, I also find the dates a little small, so that's one minor negative, not a, not a showstopper for me. I, I know why it has to be just a circular cutout, because it's natural stone, but I would have liked to have seen that a little bigger, perhaps if he uh, revises the model in a, in a later version. That might be something he might consider. But I personally prefer the no date, but if you want the functionality, you have a date there. I guess it, he's doing it so he doesn't interfere with the dial. It's a deliberate design choice. He's definitely put a lot of thought into these watches, uh, but nevertheless, my person takes the without. So let's talk about the extra straps. Uh, I think I might have mentioned the bracelet uh, with the quick release pins and so on. Um, it's actually something that's really unique to the brand, and if you're going to get a Valimore Caliburnus, no matter what the color is, I strongly recommend getting this bracelet if you can, as he has, um, I, I don't know when they're going to run out stock-wise. So and I don't know if he's going to be able to make any more. So if you have that option, do get the bracelet. Um, if you didn't get the bracelet with the Kickstarter and for some reason they're out and you're, you're looking at this video and you're interested in it, I just keep checking back from time to time. It, it makes all the difference. I mean, these are lovely straps. I really like uh, this strap on the wrist. But just this bracelet is part of the uniqueness of the watch. So... Um, as this is my one, I can I can wear it. So it's kind of like black silver. It's more of a tarnished look, but it's actually there's I mean, it's not rusty or anything like that. It's it's just a paint application color on the marine grade three one six L stainless steel. So it's it's pretty decent. Uh, in terms of the other straps, 
Um, in terms, when you if you were to buy a strap separately, they'll come like this. These are the two kind of ridge back straps, um, the blue and the black. But they have other uh, colors and options as well. well one of the, my favorites uh, were this uh, kind of uh, I forgot whether these are. Um, Oh, well, they're artificial or I believe these actually might be real alligator. We'll see. Um, so it's kind of alligator graining, but I think they probably are alligator straps just by touching them. So I'll go research that, put that in the comments. Sorry, I don't didn't quite remember that. Um, but we do have some of these available. The colors are pretty similar. So uh, the blue is almost the same. But whereas this is kind of a non-shiny blue, it's kind of matte. This one has a sheen to it, um, but it's a very similar texture blue. And then there's no red one, obviously, in terms of the, which was a shame actually, uh, in, the, in the campaign there was no red Ridgeback, but you, if you're going to go and use a red watch, uh, this could go pretty nicely. I really think that would be nice, but at the same time, my personal uh, recommendation would be if you are going to get a dial of one color, get a strap of a different color, don't make it all the same because it, it, you really want the dial to stand out on the watch uh, in the same way that this one does or it does on the black strap. I actually think this is better with a black strap. Black and red go pretty well together. Uh, sure it would look good red and red but uh, I, my personal take would be to avoid the um, having the same color everywhere pretty much which is a good rule of thumb in my opinion. So we have those, and then the third type of strap that we have is the, I've got three of them here, we've also got another red. This is kind of like the more vintage leather style. I don't think this red is a good match, um, but it's still a very nice strap, and the fact that you get this decorated uh, buckle on it, I actually think these are actually decent straps no matter what. Um, just I'm not so sure that would do well with the this particular color because the match is not very good with the red but perhaps if you did that with a black you know like the same way that this is a red dial and a black strap perhaps we could actually do the reverse black and black looks decent enough but imagine uh, maybe not that's me thinking on my feet you can tell this is a live review that's unedited um, strike that one so my personal take is this is not my taste but then it might be your taste um, the light blue is also interesting. It's almost a suede uh, kind of take to it. And this might actually work uh, possibly as well. And then you've got a black as the third one. So just thinking about this, um, I'm kind of like digging a deep hole as I'm selling these straps too. Oops, sorry, bang the camera there. But I'm just trying to always give a candid review. My personal take is I wouldn't go for these three for these watches but they're actually really nice straps so you might want to consider that for something else particularly as you could probably get away with uh, the um, decorated buckle uh, and tang here just get away with that on a normal stainless steel watch it does have a bit of a PVD application but it's underneath at the bottom of the wrist and it's still stainless steel so it just, just, it's just, it's a really interesting combination. So you could actually use these straps for something else potentially. So uh, that's just a quick overview of the main watch itself. Uh, so the, the main products that you get from Valimore. Um, but at the same time, I obviously have some extra colors here. So let's talk about these. So this one is a, um, basically it's also a marble. Same that we had the black marble we looked at earlier but it's a green marble instead of black. don't know how well it will pick up in this light. Let's put a bit more light on for a second. Um, perhaps it, yeah, it's kind of hard to pick up sometimes. It's a very dark green, so it's got almost black properties to it, but it's you can tell it's not black if you pull out the strap. Um, at least I can tell it's not black. Hopefully it will look better. For, I'm looking through the camera lens uh, here, which is a very small aperture, so hopefully you can pick up that it's it's green rather than black. This is one of my personal favorites too. I actually think this goes super well with a bracelet. So uh, these two uh, are my personal favorites. So this one we will be carrying as an exclusive in the Microbrand store, a similar price point to the others. Um, we're not stocking that just yet. This is one of two samples that I have. So I have the 
uh, black on a sorry the uh, marble green on a strap, and I have a marble green on a bracelet, so you can compare between the two, um, see what you're interested in. So we're definitely going to be carrying this in the store. I do really love this. I'm super excited about that. The other one that we have, um, which we will possibly carry, uh, we've run some tests uh, and surveys and asked people questions, and some people really preferred this to the um, to the green marble because it's brighter, a little bit stronger. This is a sea green agate. Well, if you're into things like power stones, uh, not my personal cup of tea. Apparently, this one supposedly has healing properties, um, but. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to pass on that. <laughs> it's it's not something that I'm into and not something I want to push, but for people who are into uh, stones and that kind of a thing, that might be important. I don't think green marble has any specific properties apart from looking really cute. Um, but anyway, uh, some people really like this because it's a brighter color. It tends to, oh, it kind of reminds me of like a sencha, which is it's kind of like powdered green tea, if you ever have any Japanese tea ceremony tea it's a very vivid green color and it kind of looks a little powdery though it's almost like a uh, definitely i can see that sea green agate's a good name for it. it is an agate and it's a it's a green color so i really like this too um some people when we were asking around really preferred this to the marble on the whole though more people like the marble a little a uh, bit more than the agate so we're going to consider carrying this it's like twice as many like the the marble but in the, you know about a third of the people really preferred the agate and didn't like the marble so we're probably going to carry both but i can't promise that at this time if we don't carry the agate i'm sure value more will carry that um but i'm definitely going to go ahead with at least one of them which is the marble but probably I'm still talking to Valley more about this. So this is early days on this video, just to give you an early heads up. These will be in the store soon, so look out for them. If you don't want to miss them, don't have to keep coming back. Just sign up. Um, we have a newsletter. Just hit the footer, and you can sign up for the newsletter there or go and create an account. We don't spam people. We send about one or two emails a month at the most. Typically, it's one a month, but if it's the holiday season like Christmas or something, we might send two. So you're not going to be hit with a ton of emails, just one or two a month. So it's worth signing up anyway because we also have um, pre-orders in there, similar to Kickstarter. We try not to do them at the same time as Kickstarter because we want our creators to be able to sell as many watches as possible. But if... Um, when the Kickstarter comes to an end, if it's even been on Kickstarter, we'll then start our pre-orders and uh, so it's your chance to get something that you might have missed on Kickstarter or maybe you didn't know about it and found out later on. Uh, it's a chance to get it on a pre-order. And the other reason for perhaps doing this, unlike Kickstarter, we give a 100% money back guarantee, 100% um, refund up until the day we ship. So basically... Um, if you want to order through Kickstarter, pretty much you've written that off. Uh, so there's a certain amount of risk involved. Will the creator be able to create the watch? Will there be changes to it? With us, you can back the watch. And if it's taking a little bit too long and you're changing your mind, or maybe uh, the creator didn't come up with the watch, you come back to us, we'll, we'll give you the money back and that's on us. So we take that risk instead of you. Uh, slightly different price to Kickstarter, but still a much lower price as a pre-order price than you would get at retail. Uh, and certainly a much lower than your typical discounted price you get in sales season. So uh, a good opportunity. So getting on the mailing list, you can find out about Kickstarters. One or two watches we carry have never been uh, on Kickstarter. For example, we're carrying one now from Decima, which is an Albanian company. And uh, uh, because they're in Albania, they can't be on Kickstarter. So plenty of opportunities to give you a chance to learn about some watches you might not have otherwise seen. Um, so do check that out. It's certainly worth signing up. Uh, of course, I'm biased, but at the same time, um, I think it will be... I sign up for a ton of mailing lists, uh, probably about 30 or 40 mailing lists uh, for uh, various uh, brands and stores. And I buy a ton of watches as well from others. So um, it's something I enjoy doing, just finding out what's out there. So do check us out. If you have any questions about any of this here, do let me know as well. Post a comment in, uh, if you like, or send me a private message. 
or just uh, go to a microbrand.store and use the chat option there and you've got about a 50% chance of getting hold of me if it's not somebody else uh, they can certainly ping me and we're happy to answer any questions about these watches at all um, I'm super excited that we can actually look at all these at once um, and uh, <laughs> it's the first time I've done this so I'm probably going to see a few more videos like this in the near future that's it, don't want to take your time anymore um, appreciate you watching the review and uh, let me know if you enjoyed it or you want me to do more like this and I'll be more than happy to. Thanks a lot. Take care.